Well, hello, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Our next trolley stop is here. Our next trolley stop is now. Welcome back to another all new edition of the PR from the Heart Children's Book Spotlight Series. To be precise, we have reached episode number 148. That is the 148th trolley stop here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series and PR from the Heart. My name is John Massalonis, the manager of PR from the Heart. We appreciate all of you spending some time with us here in our neighborhood this week as we are approaching, again, the start of the summer reading season, the countdown to the 150th episode of the Children's Book Spotlight Series is just around the corner. And yes, we're just a few short weeks away from Father's Day, one of my favorite times of the year. One of the things that I really love about the world of children's literature and children's books is, is that in such a very beautiful, special, and meaningful way that they can bring fathers and sons together. They can bring grandsons and grandfathers together. And even if you're doing your part to be able to, let's say, reparent your own inner child, to reconnect with the inner child within you, children's books bring so much healing. And I know that growing up, one of the things that one of my fondest memories growing up was when I was in Cub Scouts, back when I lived in Buffalo, New York, and I remember we would always go to Allegheny State Park, and we would go and we'd be in the outdoors, and that was a little bit kind of out of my comfort zone, so to speak, we would take the time and go fishing and just connecting with, with Mother Nature. So if you're looking for a wonderful children's book that really shows us the importance of getting out into nature and to create a closer connection between fathers and sons, well, leave it to a brand new children's book to help us see the way on all of the above. We encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, to head on over to the official website of our featured guest here on this week's episode of the PR from the Heart Children's Book Spotlight Series. You can head on over to lindajoysingleton.com. You can also head on over to amazon.com and you can purchase your copy of Sun and Sun. That's S-U-N and S-O-N. This is courtesy of our neighbors at Amicus Inc. If you feel guided to leave a five-star review, that is one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for our featured guest here on episode number 148 of the Children's Book Spotlight Series this week to let her know that she's doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and of course, for everyone who is celebrating the father and son bond, especially at this time of the year, leading into Father's Day, the trolley doesn't have to go very far. We go from the Southern California area here in San Diego to the Northern California area, just near the foothills. Joining us here as our featured guest in episode number 148 of the Children's Book Spotlight series is Linda Joy Singleton. Linda, we appreciate your free time and joining us here leading into the start of the uh, Father's Day celebration season here at PR from the Heart. Thank you for spending some time with us here today. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much, John, for inviting me. I'm really excited to talk with you. And uh, this is just, I love talking about books. You can hardly shut me up. So <laughs> anything you know, ask away. Well, you have written over 50 books. And yeah. I think that that's, that that's cause for celebration in and of itself. We encourage, before we officially begin, of course, we encourage all of you who are already having fun here in our neighborhood with Linda and with myself, if you are doing your part to be able to connect with that father-son bond, just as we are here this week on the Children's Book Spotlight Series. If you're a nature lover as well, too, if you're doing your part to be able to spread the word of the importance of summer reading for our little ones, we encourage you, if you haven't had the opportunities to do so, to subscribe to PR from the Hearts Official YouTube channel and to share this very special trolley stop that is episode number 148 of the PR from the Heart Children's Book Spotlight Series. We always like to start our conversations here, Linda, we call our trolley stops, with the origin story. Now, as I had alluded to beforehand, 50 children's books. And I think that that's fantastic. When did you know, was it a specific moment? Was it a specific series of events early in your, in your life? When did you know that your work was meant for the children and your mission was to be a children's author? Well, I started writing very young. Um, as soon as I could write, um, I have stories that I wrote when I was eight. And um, one particular story I always take when I do school talks because it shows the story when I wrote it when I was eight. And then a year later when I was nine, I wrote it again and rewrote it and made everything neater and added chapter headings and added games in the back. So um, I definitely started writing young. 
and nobody around me was writing. So I kind of decided at that age that I must have been born to be a writer because this is something that I just started doing and nobody told me to. I just loved words and stories and suddenly I was not just reading books voraciously, but I was just writing all the time. Now, as for the origin of when I decided to write for children, when I was young, I loved series, like everybody knows Nancy Drew, but I would go to secondhand bookstores and I found all the other gold, um, mysteries that were also series. And my favorite was the Judy Bolton mystery series, which are definitely, you know, they were published quite a while ago, um, 1932 is when they were originally published. And I found these books and I found out there were 38 titles. It was like that became a quest. So all during my teenage years, my parents would take me to bookstores and we would search out this series, trying to find them all. And I wanted to be a series author too. I even have the application to a writing school that I wrote to once. And I keep it because this is something else that I love to show kids when I go into schools. And the application on it has a little tell about yourself. And um, so what I wrote was that I want to be a writer of series just like the Judy Bolton author, Margaret Sutton. And in fact, I did send her a fan letter when I was 13 and she wrote back and we actually became friends. So, but jump a little later, uh, you know, life happens. So I kind of spent a little time in my twenties, you know, marriage and kids and that whole thing. And so writing was on a back burner. It was just something I thought maybe, maybe someday, but I didn't see how it could happen because I lived in Sacramento and in a, in a fairly small town area. And I knew that publishing was in New York where it was at that time. And I couldn't imagine how I would even talk to anybody in New York. So it wasn't something I thought could happen. But in my late twenties, I happened to hear about a writing conference in my town in Sacramento at, the, at a college. And so I went and it just, everything opened from then on. I joined the local writing group. I decided I was gonna write, I love mysteries still, but I decided I'm gonna write grown up mysteries and I, um, and they can have some romance too. So I joined um, Romance Writers of America and I learned so much about the publishing business and I started submitting, submitting, submitting. Um, I got to be really good at writing synopsises and first chapters, just sending off my work to New York publishers, just like I always wanted to do. But about a year into it, I was still reading those kid books I loved so much. I collected them and I have many, many children's mystery series was mostly my focus. And I was reading them for fun and I just started writing a kid's story one day. And by the third day I'd gotten up early and wrote a new chapter every day. It just like the light bulb moment. It's like, you know, forget the adult market. That's not where I'm meant to be. I'm meant to write for kids and I knew it and I've never deviated from it. So, you know, you know anyway. You have been on such a fantastic adventure. And I think that was uh, some sort of a precursor to the adventures that the little boy and his father are on in Son and Son, which we're going to be talking about momentarily. As you mentioned, life can happen, right? And we really go through our own journey and we can experience, especially when we're stepping into something new for the first period of time, we can have uh, obstacles, problems, stressors, troubles, worries, challenges, difficulties, you name it, they kind of mean the same thing. As you were stepping into the kid lit arena and writing one book after another, and, and especially with regards to Sun and Sun, which we're going to be talking about as well, too. We always like to be able to share, uh, to have an author share their vulnerable side if they feel comfortable in doing so as well, because there's a lot of people that are out there that are tuning into the children's book spotlights, so whether it be newbies to the kid lit community, someone who has a desire at some point in time to be able to write a book, even if it's someone stepping into owning a business for the first period of time, being a parent for the first period of time, uh, for the first point in time in their lives. What were some of the challenges and difficulties that you experienced early on in your career as a children's author? What were some of the things that you give credit to that helped you to get through to the other side of those challenges and difficulties? Well, um, obviously there were a lot of rejections. I would have so many ideas 
And when I first started writing, you could find out if an editor was interested in your story by just sending a synopsis and a few chapters. So I would create, you know, in a whirlwind, like every week, I swear, I must have had a new synopsis and new chapters. And so I was just doing a lot of submitting, which meant a lot of rejections. I have a box of rejections from the early days when they were came through the mail. You know, you get the letter in the mail and you're hoping it's gonna be good news, but it's like, oh, another rejection. I actually wrote an article once on rating your rejections because I got so many of them. And there were the really great ones, you know, where they would say like, oh, we really love so much about this. You know, if you want to rewrite and submit again, that would be great. Or then there were mostly a lot of form letters, just like you could tell. It wasn't really just to you. They just looked at it and they said it didn't fit them. So you had to get a thick skin when it came to rejections. And what kept me going is just the hope that one of these submissions was going to, you know, appeal to an editor. And it took about two and a half years of submitting and going to conferences. All along this, I was learning to write and I joined a critique group. So I was a, in a group with four or five other women. It kind of changed off and on. And we would meet once a week for eight years. The same group met once a week until the person whose house it had moved away. So that kind of ended that. But I just kept learning and learning. I would go to any conference I could go to. Um, and the critique group was so helpful. They, I just learned so much being around other writers. So, but finally, one of the submissions, I got a call. I could not believe it. I got what we call the call. I got a call from an editor and she said, you know, we'd like to buy your book. We really like this one. And my first question, instead of what you would expect, my first question was, which one? <laughs> <laughs> So many outs. And um, and that was my very first book. It was a children's book called Almost Twins. It was a small publisher. They sold strictly to book fair. So my first published book was never in bookstores. But, um, oh gosh, was it exciting. Uh, that editor, because it was a smaller company, she really taught me a lot about editing because I was still really rough. It's like I had good ideas. I could write fast. My characters and plots and all that was pretty good. But the actual craft of writing, I still had a lot to learn back then. And, you know, thankfully the editor was very patient and I just get this manuscripts back with just, you know, ink everywhere, like change this, change that, add this, and I did it. And each time I did revisions, I learned. So you, you don't really know. Um, they never bought another book from me, but uh, that excitement for that first book carried over and I ended up getting five from another publisher within within the next six years about. And uh, it took me actually a while to get an agent. I sold my first nine books on my own just because sheer determination and just getting out there and trying everything I could think of. I give you a lot of credit because, you know, some people who, you know, a lot of people who purchase children's books, they walk into the, their favorite local bookstore, whether it be an independent bookstore, children's bookstore, their favorite library, they may see a book from their favorite award-winning, best-selling, New York Times best-selling author and think they have it made, that it's super easy to involve so much time and energy and effort and follow through. And it's so important that you allowed yourself to be able to receive the necessary support early along the way. I think that that is fantastic. One of the things that I really love about your work, and we'll talk about this towards the end of our conversation here today is the fact that you love to be able to share writing and career advice for authors. And I think that's just such a great and noble thing that you're doing for children's authors that are on the rise in the Kittlet community. And we appreciate all of you who are spending some free time with us here in our neighborhood, here at PR From The Heart. Joining us here is our featured guest on episode number 148 of the PR From The Heart Children's Book Spotlight Series is children's author, Linda Joy Singleton. We are almost ready to dive into the pages of her newest heartfelt children's book, Sun and Sun, that's S-U-N and S-O-N, courtesy of some of our neighbors at Amicus Inc. We encourage you to head on over to Linda's official website. If you'll guide it to do so, that is lindajoysingleton.com. If Amazon is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing, you can leave a five-star review for Sun and Sun or any of Linda's other dozens of children's books. Uh, is That is one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for Linda. Let her know that she's doing much needed, wonderful work for children, parents, families, educators, those who love great children's books. 
the bond that, that fathers and sons share is something very special. I know that we just celebrated Mother's Day, so shout out to all those amazing moms out there as well. Moms and dads have the job that you can't call in sick. It's something that you have to show up for each and every single day. And I, one of the things, you know, parents and, and children went through so much during the pandemic, Linda. And I, I still say this, even though we're starting to be on the other side of the pandemic now, thankfully, is that during the pandemic, one of the silver linings is the fact that families had the opportunity to become closer together. What does it mean to you now with Sun and Sun release, we're going to talk about it momentarily. It's a wonderful book. What does it mean to you knowing that your book is helping to bring fathers and sons even closer together, especially coming out of the pandemic? What does that mean to you? Well, I was really excited to write this book. I had already written Crane and Crane, which is in the same style of short verbs and homonyms. So one word will like carry an entire picture that won't just show what that word does. It shows things in the background. And at the same time, you have the same word showing the opposite effect. You know, with the sun, you see the sun in the sky. And with the child's sun, you know, you see the father waking him up in the morning and for their very special day together. So, you know, I'm very fortunate that I have four generations of men, men, boys in my family. My dad is getting ready to turn 90. And I have a son and I have two grandsons. So it's it's been really wonderful. I get to be with my grandkids a lot. I'm so fortunate and I'm very, very grateful the fact that they live just about a block that way. They're very, very close physically. So I get to be part of their lives. Like, you know, last week I took my grandson, you know, to his wrestling practice or I drive him to school in the morning every once in a while. So I get to have all these special times with him. So this book though came on the heels of Crane and Crane. And when, after doing Crane and Crane, which was an idea that sprang because my husband um, was a crane operator, the machine type for 30 years. And and anyway, just I love homonyms and wordplay. And it was like crane and crane. There's a bird crane and there's a there's actually a sandhill crane sanctuary. Just just, you know, as the crows fly is about a half an hour away, pretty close to where I live. So once I did crane and crane, I looked to see what other homonyms I could pair for a story. I found only two. And one of them I won't tell you, <laughs> but you obviously know the other one because it's sun and sun. But it can't just be a homonym like sun and sun, you know, the sun of the sky and the sun. It had to be a word that would carry a story. So it had to have character, plot, conflict, and comparison. So these books have very few words, but there are layers of stories in them. And I've had teachers and librarians come up to me and be very excited because they can't wait to teach all these different elements, you know, using the book. In fact, with Crane and Crane, I'm, I'm really thinking of making a video with it because the words are actually an exercise program. Because it starts off with, you know, you get kids when you're reading to move with you. You go lift and sway. Almost every word is an action word that you can exercise to. So when it came to Sun and Sun, I just had to think about the story and know what the comparisons were going to be. And because, you know, I had a son of my own, I just remembered the fun camping trips we went on as a family. And we still, we still actually occasionally will go camping as a family. I don't use tents anymore myself though. I much prefer uh, a trailer. So, and um, one of the important scenes in it is when the word grow, for grow, the child is being measured against the wall. Well, who hasn't done that with their child or themselves or know somebody that has all the marks on the wall as the kids got older. And that was the one thing I'd ask the illustrator up front. I said, please show the marks, the kid up against the wall, just like my parents did for me. And I did for my parents and my daughter is now done for her kids. Mm. It's tradition. So hopefully I, I answered that question somewhere in there. <laughs> you did, you did. And there's just the, the illustrations, Richard Smythe, your illustrator did such a beautiful job. And as a lot of, people who enjoy children's books realize, but some may not is, is that 
when you have an author and an illustrator doing the work together, it's not like your besties on the phone every single moment of the day saying, can you check this illustration? Can you check this latest, uh, uh, you know, stanza from the book that I said, you, you really have to trust the fact that it's like two hearts beating as one that Richard saw your vision and that you were working together. These illustrations, I have to say, not only are they very colorful and very vibrant, but they really conceptualize the bond between father and son. I know that my favorite illustration, if I'd like to share, is right at the very end when you see father and son together. The little boy is jumping into the arms of his father and that really signifies together. Such very light colors. Over the past couple of years, we've gone through a lot of heaviness. So I think that just any time that you can have more lightness, more color, that definitely brings so much to the table as well. Could you talk to us about working with Richard and how he was able to capture your vision of sharing the elements of nature while also showing the heartfelt bond that fathers and sons share? Well, it helped because Richard and I had already done Crane and Crane together. But for Crane and Crane, the way it happened is I wrote the book, I sent it to my agent, she sent it out to a few places and Anikis found it and they loved it and they offered a contract. And I was obviously very excited that they were going to publish the book. And then when we got close to production of the book, they contacted me and said, these are two illustrators we're considering which one do you prefer? And um, I picked Richard and she was like, yeah, that's kind of where we're leaning to. So I just, cause I went to his website and looked at some of the different and he had some nature photos. I was like, okay, that looks good. And then, then honestly, I didn't have any, um, any contact with Richard at all until the book came out and I found him on online on one of my media things and, you know, friended him and followed him. And so we did talk a little bit and I found out that um, he was also going to be the illustrator for Son and Son because the editor had decided to go with him again. And here's one of the sweetest things about it. One of the best backstories. Richard, as he was finishing up the art for Son and Son, his wife gave birth to their first son. Just, yeah, <laughs> it's too precious. <laughs> The timing of that, the timing yeah. was even perfect. Yeah. yeah, and it was it was January right before COVID hit because the book initially was going to be out in 2021. And uh, things got delayed. Um, in fact, another backstory thing I can tell you is that the ending for Sun and Sun was not the original ending I had planned. When I submitted it, I had this idea that the last few words would be spin and it would show the world spinning around to the other side of the earth and showing a new family rising in the morning, you know, for rise and shine like the opening. And well, I still think that was a fun idea. My editor very wisely contacted me and said, we need to have a huggy kind of happy, sweet feeling at the ending, not a surprise just like I did with Crane and Crane. It also has that final word that's perfect. You know, it just, it gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling of, of a family being together. So I had to change it. And, and um, Richard has actually already started to do the art. So, um, but anyway, after talking with my editor, I, she said, okay, figure it out, come up with something else. We need a different, we need a really nice single solid word for the ending. And it wasn't until the next day that all of a sudden I was just sitting down, you know, doing nothing. And all of a sudden in my head, it was just like together, together. That's it. That is the perfect word. And I literally got up, went to my, um, my uh, iPad and sent her a message and said, I think I've got it. Hmm. And she's right. She emails back. She says, yeah, you got it. Okay. So that's, that is the ending we went with. And I am so grateful for, you know, my editor. Editors are so wise. It definitely, ha it helps when you have a great editor as part of your support system in the process. Uh, the connection between humans and nature, you know, yes. especially with during the pandemic, that was one of the things that were the opportunities to do more of 
to go out, whether it be hiking, to go swimming, to just, you know, be in the sunshine, just to walk around, put down the devices. We really couldn't go anyplace else for, uh, for, for quite a bit. Um, could you share with us, especially because I think it's very important for us now to be more conscious and more aware of how we're spending our time and our energy. And one of the great places to spend your time and your energy to recharge is nature. Could you share with us a little bit about the connection that we have as nature and especially families, especially fathers and sons, and really why it's important to be able to spend time in nature if you have little ones growing up? I've always loved being outside. I mean, I know even as a little girl, if I could go walking somewhere, I would go kind of sometimes going off exploring a little bit when we would go on camping trips. And um, when we were able to buy the house I live in right now, once our kids were grown, we, we, I live in nature now. I'm surrounded by oak trees and pines. So every morning I take a walk around my own place. Um, and, and it's just, there's not a day that I don't look around where I live and just say, I am so grateful. I'm so lucky that I get to be here. So, you know, and especially when COVID hit and I'd hear about people, you know, in apartments and they can't get out or do anything. And, um, you know, unless they drive somewhere a ways. So it's, it's, it's just such a fortunate thing to actually be in the trees and be able to walk anytime I want that I do not take it for granted at all. I know it's just, uh, I've always loved walking. I walk at least 10,000 steps every day. Bit, bit. <laughs> that, is, so. that is that is so uh, not only important, but, but I really feel that when it comes to help recharge our creative juices, that's one of the places where it's like, if you're feeling a little scattered, ungrounded, you just need some time away to kind of recharge your jets, that's where you go where you head out to is Mother Nature. We're beginning to wind down our time with our featured guest here on episode number 148 of the PR from the Heart Children's Book Spotlight Series, children's author Linda Joy Singleton. We are enjoying her brand new children's book courtesy of our neighbors at Amicus Publishing, Amicus Inc. You can head on over to lindajoysingleton.com. You can also head on over to amazon.com if that is your preferred online vehicle of choosing where you can leave a five-star review for Sun and Sun after purchasing and enjoying this beautiful heartfelt children's book. That is one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for Linda to let her know that she's doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, those who love great children's books. As we had alluded to, we were already sharing Crane and Crane as well. There's many other children's books and also middle grade and YA books that Linda has published as well too. So feel free to check out any of those other empowering reads as well in, in the process as you're holding one of them up already right there as well too. Uh, there's my Curious Cats Spy Club mystery series. So I'm very proud of that series. In fact, I'm, I'm currently working on a book just because fans want another one. So I'm writing one just for fans. This, this gets into my, uh, one of my last questions is, is that you were recently at TLA out in Texas yeah. and being able to, some people may say go on the road and that there's, there's truth to that, but to just connect with people to connect with your readers. For two years, it was just, for the most part, two squares on a screen. And when you were doing virtual events and connecting with kids, it was from afar. What has that meant to you, knowing the fact that not only that's back, but that you're able to, as I, I feel one of the things that we really learned during the pandemic of many is the importance of not taking anything for granted. And the fact that all of this, especially the return of live events returning, it's just such an, in, an incredible blessing. So what did that experience, especially in, in Texas, mean to you? PLA uh, was so wonderful because, you know, I'm surrounded by librarians. We all love books. I would sit down just at a table sometimes, and then we're all sharing book talk. It doesn't matter if we're a librarian or author or whatever. It's all about how much we love children's books. So TLA was fabulous. And you know, being able to share my book with so many librarians meant, just meant so much. Um, and I actually did a face-to-face -face school talk recently. I did a three assemblies at a school um, in the Central Valley. Fortunately, because of where I live in the country, I can, an hour will take me to the Central Valley, 
to the Northern Hills or to Sacramento. So I can like go anyway for just an hour. So it's not bad. But I did three assemblies and oh, it was great. The kids were just so interested and had so many questions. And afterwards I signed some books and, and you know, I actually just, I wasn't gonna read it, but they all sent me these little letters afterwards and just said how much I inspired them. And, and um, I love your book. Awesome. Bye club you are an amazing writer i enjoyed your visit so it's getting having them actually see you and being there and not on a screen yeah. is it really is life-changing there's one or two kids i talked to that i could tell they were really thinking that maybe they want to write now that's so awesome knowing the fact that you have such a profound impact on the lives of little ones and you're able to connect with them face to face the virtual thing it served its purpose but, but i really feel that uh, you know one of the things before my work as a publicist for children's authors and and reading to children uh, i remember my time in the world of professional wrestling and i remember whenever the uh, the professional wrestlers i i did a wrestling radio show for over 10 years no, my, now that, that, that that was kind of like the precursor to the children's book spotlight series in a much softer more heartfelt format but i remember that when the wrestlers would come through buffalo i would be one of the individuals to to contact children's hospital in buffalo the child life department and the kids faces would light up when they would see these larger than life superhero mythical like figures with the big shiny gold belts and the muscle shirts. And I feel that children's authors in their own way are superheroes because when little ones take the time to enjoy their favorite children's books have mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, the babysitter read to them and they can meet their favorite author face to face, that's an incredible blessing. One of the things that uh, of course, this kind of has this universal thread. We talked at the very beginning of our conversation about the father and son bond. And I think this is a perfect place to begin to wind down our time together is, is that um, reading is one of the key fundamental things that us as parents and caregivers and custodians of little ones can share. It truly is a gift with, with our little ones. With obviously being a mom on your end of things and a grandmother on your end of things as well too, could you share with us the role that you feel that reading helps and how it strengthens the father-son bond especially leading into Father's Day when we celebrate this treasured day during the year? Well, reading is everything. I mean, when a child reads, a young especially, they just absorb all the words, all the images, and they gain empathy for other people, other characters. It's just so important. I can hardly even describe how important it is because it's something I feel so strongly about. Just kids should be reading. Parents should be reading to them as much as they can at night. Don't stop when they're suddenly eight, nine, 10, 11. I was, I, when Harry Potter was coming out, I read Harry Potter to my son up until he was about 16. And then he was just too impatient. But at that point I was still <laughs> reading them. And we were having this wonderful, you know, mother son <laughs> connection, sharing this love of this book. And we were so excited, you know, we, we hiked once three miles to get the book when it first came out, when a new one came out. So um, it's just so important. And the kids that read do so much better in life. They're so much achievers. And it's and, and especially nowadays, like I mentioned, empathy. You, they need that. When you read, every time you read, you're in somebody else's head. You're living their lives. And I'm a voracious reader as well. You know, I'm constantly doing audiobooks and, and um, you know, mystery series and kids books. I'm just reading all the time. And every time I read, I'm experiencing somebody else's life. And it makes me so much more understanding. Like I just read a book that a friend of mine in Canada wrote about a child that was had anxiety. Now, I think we all have our moments of being anxious and nervous and worried. But by reading this book, I really understood the difference just with ordinary worries, you know, for this condition that a lot of kids are doing. So it's just reading is just so important. And I think it's especially good, you know, so often it's the mothers who will do the reading. But mm -hmm. yeah, dad, there, do some of the reading, show the boys. I think, um, you know, the more men they see reading, the more they're going to pick up a book and read themselves because it's just sometimes a little more women that, that will be doing the bedtime reading. So, you know, take charge, push mom aside and say, 
it's my turn. I want to read to the kids now. <laughs> yeah. There is, I, I feel that uh, one of the main reasons why I, I love sharing books about fathers and sons, I feel even though the experience hasn't happened yet, Linda, I know that at some point in time, one of the most important roles in my life, uh, in this lifetime is to be a father. And it's interesting because I already have, I have like a whole bunch of children's books that I've already have set, like for my little <laughs> one, whenever he comes into the world, including son and son right now, which is totally awesome. What would be some words of support you know obviously you're a mom on your end of things but for all the fathers out there you know everyone's gone through a lot during the pandemic again we're, we're coming out of this and whatnot for for parents especially fathers who are looking to strengthen the bond with their little ones and just maybe need some words of support and encouragement what would be what would be that message that you would like to share to those dads well, you know, just pick up a book. <laughs> just pick up a book and sit down and read. So much about reading is habit. If a child does not read regularly, they don't get in the habit of the brain, I, you know, the whole reading, the way it works in your brain. And then it becomes hard. It's not as easy for them. So they're like, they're just, I see kids are just shrugging off. It's like, Oh, I don't really like reading. It's like, well, you just need to do it more. You know, mm -hmm. I've, I've heard that, you know, some of the schools and stuff encourage reading. Like, just read 15 minutes a night. Make sure the kids may be reading some of the words themselves when they can. Just, just do it. Make it a habit. Because once you start to do something, what is it they say? Like, three months or something, and something becomes a habit. So, a habit, habits can be good sometimes. Reading is a great habit. Start it. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I'm really glad that you shared that because a lot of times fathers think that they need to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, to strengthen the relationship with their sons um, and to become better fathers. And I think something such as simple as a children's book, as we had talked about when we shared uh, son and son, there's so much good, there's so much joy, there's so much love, there's so much healing that are inside children's books, including son and son, that that just that simple act of reading between father and son can really strengthen the relationship and bring it to the highest of heights. Uh, two of the ways that we like to close out each of our children's book spotlight series, we're very much influenced by the work of one of our favorite friends and neighbors, the late Mr. Rogers, of course, the long, the host of the long running children's television program, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. So we like to give a little tip of the cap to Mr. Rogers. Throughout his time on Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, he did this in different ways, whether it be talking uh, to people across the country through talks, commencement speeches, most notably when he received his Lifetime Achievement Award at the daytime Emmy shortly before he passed from stomach cancer. And he always kept the time, Linda, whether it be 15 seconds, 30 seconds, or 60 seconds, he encouraged us to remember those who helped love us into being. And that was his way of saying, remember those people along the way that helped you, that, that reminded you that you have a divine spark in you. Those that reminded you that you were loved, that you were special, just the way that you are. So as we celebrate the release of, of Sun and Sun, and as we celebrate you here on this episode of the Children's Book Spotlight Series, who would be some of the people that you would like to recognize on this episode of the Children's Book Spotlight Series, episode number 148, who helped love you, Linda Joy Singleton, to be it? Well, certainly my parents, my mother and I to this day, you know, when I write a book, she's my, you know, one of my very first readers, if not the first one. Um, I'll print it out the entire manuscript just so she can read the book. And dad, early on, when I was interested in writing and I was 14 years old and I didn't know how to learn to become better at that age, he took a writing class at a local college. Partly he was interested too, but he took it and then he'd come home and say, okay, this is how you format your manuscript, you know? And, and these are, this is, a, you get this book and it has a list of editors and addresses and this is how you send off things to New York. And so he really nurtured that and you know, he, tried, he wrote a little bit on his own, but he had other passions, so it wasn't what what's his main focus. But both of them have just always supported my books. They all took me to the bookstores, and without all of those books, you know, I, I wouldn't have found all the books that really did inspire me. And I'll say Margaret Sutton of the Judy Bolton books. She inspired me, too. She became kind of like a mentor to me. Once I started writing to her, she wrote back, and she even 
asked me to look at some of my stories, which, you know, as an, as an author, I know you really can't do that too much, but she reached out to me that way. And, um, and she made it to almost a hundred and I was able to go to her memorial in Pennsylvania in 2001. Those, so, are, those are some wonderful people and I'm glad that you're taking the time to recognize those because how does the expression go? It takes a village that we can't do what it is that we came here to do by ourselves. And it's so important to allow ourselves to be able to receive the support, whether it be from mom or dad or a trusted mentor along the path. Um, we also like to be able to, I'm, I'm a firm believer, Linda, that we can help other people that come onto our path. We're here to help other people bring their dreams, their desires, their goals, their visions, their ambitions to form and to shape. And I feel one of the ways to go about doing that, we go back to one of our favorite Disney animated classics, 1992. We all remember the late Robin Williams who voiced the genie of the lamp and Disney's classic. Okay. And so we have a little segment called Three Wishes. Now you have given okay. for many years from your heart to children, parents, families, educators, those who love great children's books to your own family. So you're being given three wishes today here on the children's book spotlight series. Now they can be for yourself, they can be for your family. They can be for the children of the world. I, I think that um, it's kind of interesting because a lot of times authors will come out of the children's book spotlight series and they know that it's an interview and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm getting three wishes. This is absolutely fantastic. So what would your three wishes be, Linda? Well, gosh, you know, that's one of those questions where you want to say for a <laughs> first of all, you know, but obviously to get, I'll just go a little more personal, a little smaller here. Obviously, you know, I want everybody I care about, you know, to stay healthy and, and um, to stay in my life. And, and uh, on a really personal level, there is another book like Sun and Sun and, um, and Crane and Crane. One other word, and I'm not going to say what it is. If anybody wants to guess and they guess right, I'll give them a free book. But there's only one other word that works for it. And I have written the book. And just fingers crossed, you never know if it if it's gonna be a published book or not, but I'm really, really hoping that happens. So that's certainly a wish there. And, um, you know, I just, I'm so grateful. It's, hard, it, it's very hard to wish for things when I already have so much I want because my family's close by and everybody, you know, knock on wood, <laughs> is, is pretty healthy. So um, that's, I'm just, I'm just grateful. I'll share my third wish with you. You can have it. <laughs> well, I, you know what? This is a wish that all fathers and sons can grow closer together, not just leading into Father's Day, not just on Father's Day, but moving forth from here. Because I know that, um, you know, when you have some challenges and some difficulties in life, it's just easy to be able to throw in the towel and say, I'm not going to work at this. But being a father is one of the most incredible blessings in the world. And it's something that truly is a gift in so many ways. So here's to all the dads out there that are doing a great job. Here's to all the grandfathers that are doing a great job. Here's to all the fathers-to-be that are doing a great job. And as I like to call them, Linda, the fathers in waiting. I think that it's so important that we take the time to be able to recognize all of those individuals here as we close out our time here on episode number 148 of the Children's Book Spotlight Series. Again, we encourage you, if you haven't had the opportunities to do so, to head on over to Amazon.com or Linda's official website, LindaJoySingleton.com. Purchase your copy of Sun and Sun, courtesy of our neighbors at Amicus Inc. If Amazon, again, is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing, you can leave a five-star review for Sun and Sun, Crane and Crane, or any of Linda's other wonderful children's books, middle grade books, YA books in the process. Is that, it, uh, that is one of the many ways that you can pledge your support to let her know that she's doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books. Raise your hand if you have had fun on episode number 148 of the PR okay. for the Heart Children's Books. <laughs> like there's many hands from Lynn and myself, and we see many hands from the little ones on screen as well too. So mission accomplished, job well done. Again, there are many more magical trolley stops to come because, of course, we're starting to celebrate the beginning of the summer reading season here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series. Father's Day is just around the corner, and then sooner than we know it, it's going to be the back-to-school season as well, too. So again, if you are a children's author and you would like for us to be able to share your inspiring story and release of your brand-new children's book, 
on a forthcoming edition of the Children's Book Spotlight Series. Just as Linda joined us here this week, we encourage you to head on over to our official website at prfromtheheart.com, or you can connect with us via any of our social media platforms of your choosing, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at PR from the Heart. We'd like to be able to give three tips of the cap in the process. The first to one of our favorite and beloved neighbors. You remember him and you love him as the lovable Mr. McFeely on the long running children's television program, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. We know him and we love him as David Newell. David joins me each and every month on the PR from the Heart Neighborly Reviews bookcast as we deliver reviews from the newest heartfelt children's books from the Shining Stars and the Kid Lit community right here at PR from the Heart. The latest episode, episode number 15 of the PR from the Heart Neighborly Reviews bookcast is now available as we share and review Rana Bulos' Nature Speak series. So if you would like for David and I to share and review your brand new children's book and a forthcoming edition of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, you know how to connect with us at prfromtheheart.com or any of our social media platforms at PR from the Heart. Also, one tip of the cap to one of our favorite neighbors, Laura Cavanaugh, the host and executive producer of San Diego Living, the official home of Empowering Reads for Kids on CBS 8, the CW San Diego, here in America's finest city, San Diego, California. Of course, Empowering Reads for Kids. We're super excited to be able to share so many wonderful books as part of this summer reading season. So if you are a children's author and would like for Laura and I to share and review your brand new children's book on a forthcoming edition of Empowering Reads for Kids to be able to connect further with children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books here in the San Diego community and beyond, you know where to connect with us at prfromtheheart.com and any of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And one last tip of the cap as well to our some of our favorite neighbors here in San Diego is we are so grateful to give back to the community even further through our Unity of El Cajon story time with Mr. John episodes, which are available each and every month through the Unity of El Cajon official YouTube channel. So if you're a children's author and would like for me, Mr. John, to be able to share your brand new children's book, such a great way that we can make such a strong and profound impact on the lives of the little ones, especially those who are cultivating and nourishing a love of reading Early on, you can connect with us via our official website at prfromtheheart.com and any of our social media platforms on screen. And if you feel that we can be of service to you here further at PR From The Heart, you know where to connect with us. You can schedule your courtesy discovery call. Let us see how we can help you to be able to get out your wonderful children's book uh, leading into the summer and the back to school season and beyond. One final time, you can head on over to the official website of our featured guest here, who was kind enough to join us here this week on the Children's Book Spotlight Series, lindajoysingleton.com. You can head on over to amazon.com, leave a five-star review for Sun and Sun, courtesy of our neighbors at Amicus Inc. Again, that's one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for Linda to let her know that she's doing wonderful and much needed work for fathers and sons, and of course, for children, parents, families, and educators, and those who love great children's books. As we hear the trolley, that means that it is time to go. So we want to thank all of you for your continued support of PR from the Heart, for your continued support of the Children's Book Spotlight Series, for your continued support of children's authors and illustrators such as Linda, who again are doing incredible work for all the little ones out there as we're heading into the summer reading season and beyond. We want to thank all of you for your continued support of children's uh, children's bookstores, independent bookstores, and local libraries. Truly some of the pillars of our community. And above all else, we want to thank you for helping us to walk home, the children of the world. One final tip of the cap to our favorite neighbor, Mr. Rogers. He reminded us each and every day of our inherent worth and value. In his private numerology, 143 was his way of saying, I love you. He reminded all of you, all of us, that you're loved, that you're special just the way that you are. So again, as Linda was kind enough to join us here this week as our featured guest here on the program, we'd like to encourage all of you as our little homage to Mr. Rogers 243. That is our way of saying that we love you. Two letters in we, four letters in love, three letters in you, reminding all of you of your inherent worth and your inherent value, that you are loved, that you are special, that you are cared for just the way that you are, that we like you, that we love you just the way that you are. So. For Linda Singleton, for myself, John Massalonis, thank you for spending some time with us here in our neighborhood here at PR from the Heart and the Children's Book Spotlight Series. And we look forward to seeing you once again very soon for another magical trolley stop here in our neighborhood at the Children's Book Spotlight Series. Thank you for helping us to walk home the children of the world, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Goodbye for now.